Hi, welcome to LearnStroke IS Classes by Arjun. You're listening to the Hindu analysis of 28 November 2022. So let's find out the important news leads of the day and discuss the important aspects of how you should study it. The first is China's anti-lockdown protest spread to dozens of campus. So you know that China's anti-lockdown protest is spreading since the last so many days. And it is basically against the harsh COVID-19 lockdown measures done by China. So in this regard, you should also know uh, the article mentions about the uh, the uh, Liangmar River. Where is this Liangmar River? The Liangmar River is actually a lifeline of Beijing. So it is actually in China. So uh, moving on to the next is G20 presidency is an opportunity to focus on global good, says Narendra Modi. So it's very good thing to a good thing happening that G20 presidency, India is getting that opportunity, and uh, the country must use utilize this opportunity for global good. So India will assume the presidency of the powerful G20 on December 1. So the next news item is Egyptian President Sisi to be chief guest at Republic Day celebration. So President Abdel Fateh Sisi will be the chief guest at the Republic Day. And both the countries are celebrating the 75th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations. And Egypt has also signed an MOU with India uh, for $8 billion to build a clean hydrogen facility in the Suez Canal economic zone. So that brings us, what is the Suez Canal Economic Zone? So you should know, where is the Suez Canal and geographically, where can you find that? And the 455 kilometer Suez Canal Zone is, gender, is actually governed by the General Authority of the Suez Canal. And the SCZ Zone brings and aims at creating business around the region and giving the access to the market of Suez Canal to the world. So you should know what you mean by the Suez Canal Economic Zone. Moving on to the next is, the South Indian page probably Vokaliga leaders set January 23 deadline for raising quota. So since the last so many uh, weeks, we have been hearing about the Vokaliga community for a crucial foothold in the old Mysore region. So this brings us what or who are the Vokaligas? Because in Kannada, Vokaliga means one who tills the land. But this peasant caste has obviously learned the art of you know, political dividend for a long time. And since 1947, Karnataka has more than 23 chief ministers and out of that, five of them were Vokaligas. And no surprise, the founder of Bengaluru, Kempa Gowda, was a Vokaliga too. So, Vokaliga were a very powerful uh, agriculture people, then very popularly in uh, administration. The Vokaligas occupied good administrative positions in Vijayanagara Empire. So, from GS paper 2, GS paper 1, history perspective, we need to know about this. And uh, moving on to the uh, uh, editorial page, it's Shifts Unexplained. So read it from the perspective of GS paper to polity and governance because this has come out. And previously, uh, uh, we should know that the, the uh, it, it also talks about the collegium system of judicial appointment. So what is the college, What is a Supreme Court collegium? What is the collegium system? And what is the concept of judicial appointment? And uh, uh, it talks about the transfer of judges from one high court to another. So you need to know what is the rule which governs one high court judge transfer to another high court judge. So... Transfer of, is transfer of judges a good thing? Definitely it is needed for exchange of talent. And it is also used to prevent the emergence of local click in the judiciary that good talented people need to move from one place to another so that the talent of uh, it is actually utilized in a good manner. And uh, the M memorandum of procedure says that judges consent is not necessary to effect a transfer. So we need to know what are the rules according to which this is happening. And uh, it's a very important question for the mains also. You might get this question also. It is time, maybe it's time have come for a complete review of the provisions of transfer of high court judges. So how can we do that? So we need to, this complete article talks about that. Moving on, it is imaginative past, the uncertain future of historians, GS paper 1 history. So this article basically talks about a statue of Kempa Gowda and how the, uh, uh, his dress, his statue and how the, it is inspired from Vijayanagara, how it is inspired from Maratha, what historians need to think, historians need to change. And it, it talks about a uh, culture perspective, the Someshwara temple at Halsuru and the uh, Ganga Dhishura temple at Shivagange. So these are some of the important things that we can learn from this. And uh, it also talks about a play called as Rangayana. Rangayana was written, it's a 250 strong, uh, it's, it's a big thing. And it also talks about the Tipu's real dreams, which is portraying Tipu as a tyrant. So read it from the historical perspective. Next is, seize Congress rhetoric powers the PLA's march ahead from GS paper to international relations. The complete article talks about the development in the wake of the 20th century Communist Party of China and most, ex you know, possibly examining the People's Liberation Army or the PLA. 
So in this, they discuss a lot of things about how People's Liberation Army or PLA is going to take an important geopolitical position. So it also talks about Solomon Islands. So where is Solomon Islands? Where is it located? You know, know the geography for prelims perspective. And also a geography concept. What is an archipelago? It talks about archipelago. Sometimes, you know, archipelago means an island group over an island chain. It's a chain cluster of collection of islands. And it also talks about China's military reforms like uh, the declaration of an uh, ADIZ or Air Defense Identification Zone over the East China Sea. So what is Air Defense Identification Zone? Something that we have to know. And next is important editorial. It's time to discuss depopulation. So that brings us an important question. What do you mean by depopulation? You know, population explosion. What is depopulation? And uh, recently, the world population touched 8 billion. And several headlines have said that India was the largest contributor to the last 1 billion and is set to overtake China as the world's most populous country by 2023. So this brings us to a question, is population explosion good? Is rising population a good thing for the country? We talk about the demographic dividend. And how do you see, what is depopulation? Simply depopulation means a substantial reduction in the population of an area. And in this, what are the challenges of population? And is India ready to tackle the problem of depopulation? And what are the challenges of population? And then the United States estimates say that India's population will begin to decline only in 2063. And the world's population will grow continuously until 2086. So uh, this has to be discussed, uh, the key pro problem of depopulation, the elements that we have to discuss. Uh, what is the element of depopulation from, uh, you should talk about the uh, equitable sharing of housework, access to childcare, the family planning, and the immigration, working age people. So all these, and some some extent, feminism, ethnic superiority, are all you know connected with this element of uh, population. So how are we discussing all this aspect? And what do you mean by fertility rate in India? Because it talks about fertility rate. What is fertility rate? And also very important concept called, what is replacement rate of fertility? That means, what is re replacement level of fertility or rate of fertility? It is simply that level of fertility at which a population exactly replace itself from one generation to the next. So what is replacement rate of fertility? The Kerala has achieved replacement fertility in 98, Tamil Nadu achieved in 2000. So what is replacement rate of fertility? Simply means replacing one level of fertility, that means fertility of population that exactly replace itself from one generation to the another. And what is sex ratio? These are some of the important areas that we have to learn. So learn it from GS paper to uh, population and uh, society, people, etc. And the next important national news is Punjab government staff edgy over old pensions restoration. So what is this concept? <clears throat> because this article talks about OPS and uh, NPS. That means the old pension scheme and the new pension scheme. So Punjab is trying to go for the old pension scheme. And it also talks about uh, what is PFRDA, the Central Pension Authority. And uh, several states are reversing back to the old pension scheme. So if Punjab, everything goes well for Punjab, I think uh, it will be the fourth state after Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand who have already implemented the old pension scheme. So what is old pension scheme and new pension scheme? So read it from the perspective of society, people, GS paper 2. In the OPS, OPS, upon retirement, employees receive 50% of their last drawn basic salary plus dearness allowance. And under OPS, employees are not required to contribute to their pension. But in the NPS, you know, those employed by the government, those employed by the government should contribute 10% of their basic salary to the NPS, while the employer contributes 14%. So uh, it's a very important... Uh, uh, idea you should so, so NPS basically has the customer has the greater flexibility in controlling the uh, sense of fate you know pension so you should know what do you mean by NPS and OPS so the Punjab government has discussed and there is one more another article called old pension scheme will burden future taxpayers so two articles uh, which uh, talks about this and moving on to the next is India Australia war games to begin so there is a bilateral exercise between India and Australian army from Rajasthan it is happening and it's called the Austra Hind 2022 so, Austria and 2022 is a defense war game exercise. Next is uh, UNESCO Award for Mumbai Museum Restoration Project. So, the Chhatrapati Shivaji, the 100-year-old uh, Maharaj Vastu Sangrali in Mumbai has won the Award of Excellence. And the museum is a part of the Victorian Gothic and Art Deco, one of the best important Mumbai's World Heritage property. It was established in uh, Wales, Prince of Wales Museum in Western India in 1922. So, GS paper, one, his, uh, history and culture is very important from this. Next is a uh, invitation from India as a G20 guest shows importance of Bangladesh. So very important GS paper to international relations. Out of all India's neighbors, the Indian government has in invited only Bangladesh as one of the 10 guest countries during the presidency. 
so this indi invitation shows the importance of bangladesh and uh, already it is the 41 largest economy which will be the 32nd largest economy in 2030 and it also talks about the rupur national uh, no, rupur nuclear power plant so it's actually done with the russian helping so where is rupur nuclear power plant it is in bangladesh and uh, and in, what is india doing to help india is actually helping uh, under an loc it's not line of control it's line of credit that means uh, uh, they are helping the fund transfer distribution the transmission lines giving them electricity support so a lot of helping is actually done by india for bangladesh so this also shows india bangladesh relationship next is nagaland group to raise its bifurcation bid with shah gs paper 3 internal security uh, that is a big problem leaders of six districts of nagaland want to break away so they are a part of npo which means eastern nagaland people organization npo the six major tribes dominant in the districts want something called as a new nagaland or frontier nagaland and that is why npo is very important so they they said they are going to boycott the hornbill festival of nagaland so that brings us what is hornbill festival of nagaland gs paper 1 culture perspective so read it from internal security and indian culture next is with new bill government cannot violate privacy it minister so this talks about national data governance framework policy what is data governance national data governance framework policy and this is uh, this uh, policy had provision for handling anonymization of data which was not part of digital personal data protection or dp dp bill 2022 so the uh, national data governance framework policy is aiming to ensure that non personal data and anonymized data both government and private entity are safely accessible by the research and innovation ecosystem this policy also aim to provide an institutional framework for data data set metadata rules standard etc so uh, from the perspective of digital personal data protection bill dpdp bill know what you mean by national data governance framework policy which is uh, giving an anonym which is giving provision for handling of anonymization of data so what is anonymization of data very important gs paper 3 uh, technology and also uh, it's a, it's an international news uh, did not attend indian ocean meet held by china says australia so recently china said has conducted something called the indian ocean region forum it was convened by china uh, india was not invited so australian maldives uh, and said that they did not participate in this so we should know what do you mean by indian ocean region forum started by china gs paper to international relations another one is north korea will have the most powerful nuclear force scheme gs paper to international relations and it talks about Uh, North Korea is going to have the world's most powerful nuclear force, and uh, which is called by which is created the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile or ICBM. So, what is an ICBM? North Korea has created which is called as the Hasong 17, the Hasong 17, which is capable of reaching the U.S. mainland. And ICBM is a ballistic missile technology which has a range of 5,500 kilometers or 3,400 miles. It is basically used to carry a primary nuclear weapons delivery. so it is as strong as hitting america hawa song 17 and uh, so these are uh, some of the important news leads of the day so i hope you will find out read more from this perspective so keep listening to learn stroke is classes by arjun